welcome everybody. It's good to see you all. Everyone seems very jazzed this morning. So I'm um, looking forward to some good discussion. So today's book is the Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And we were going to go through our couple of slides here as we normally do to set the stage for new people and anyone watching online. So um, I already said what book we're reading. This is our agenda. We will do, since there are less than 10 of us, we will do our quick intros, which is just who you are, maybe what you do, whatever you want to say about yourself. And then we'll move into round robin discussion. So we'll just take turns talking about the book and then open it up to comments with whatever time we have left over. And then we will come back and talk about the next book. So our ground rules are that we are recording. So just watch your P's and Q's and any references to other people or things that you may not want to be put out into the world. And then everyone is entitled to their own opinions. Some of us love the book, some of them, some of us have other opinions. And, but mostly we're just here to have fun, take a break and learn some new things we can put into practice. So here are the round robin questions. These are not questions you have to answer or even have to touch on at all. It's just sort of a guideline if you're not sure what to talk about. So, um, so things you can discuss when, when you're up is the overall helpfulness. So some of us are consultants, some are managers. So if you can talk about if it's relevant to your audience, meaning is it relevant to your clients? Is it relevant to the, your employees or team? Um, your ability to put things into action. So a lot of books we read, some are very actionable. They have, you know, here's the concept and then here's how to, what to do with it. Some of them are a little bit more like, okay, that's great, but now what do we do? So just your take on that. And then maybe compare it to another book if that's, um, relevant and then a favorite quote or point what you liked least about it is another thing you could talk about and then generally a thumbs up or thumbs down because we are repurposing a couple of these books for the following year using the 80 20 rule 20 percent of these books will be read again so we'll vote on those at the end of the year so what is this this is the high impact reading challenge there are two challenges one to read all the books second to show up to these meetings whether you read the books or not and um, you can officially join. So you get the emails that remind you of what we're reading and when we're meeting, you can join as a member totally for free. It just allows us, like I said, to keep track of you. And then um, you can join as a supporter and help us pay to manage the book club, especially as we grow. And then sponsorship, you also get to help, not only help support us, but also get a t-shirt, get to um, have a little bit more participation on the back end and also get to put your name on stuff like our presentation right here. So these are our five current sponsors, uh, Dr. Tanya Eastman in the house and uh, Lisa Sears and Brass Rings, Barb Stone with Build Your Path, Rob McKinney and Jody Hutch. And Jody, I'm still waiting for you to send me a logo or some other thing you might want to have on here. So if you have- That's another that, thing for John. Yeah. <laughs> and getting then, good. Um, do you want to recognize our supporters? And we have been having some new ones. So we've got Barry, Eric, Heather, and Chris. So thanks all of you. Um, and we're just being transparent with the numbers because our goal is to raise money so that we're not only paying to administer this group, but we're putting the funds into a first time publishers fund and also um, a literary literacy project. So uh, we're getting closer, it's awesome. And then our next book is Big Magic by uh, Elizabeth Gilbert. And we'll touch back on that at the end of the meeting today. So anybody wanna kick off the discussion? I can, if you want. Go for it. Um, and my name is Jody Hatch. Um, well, I'll, I'll say I do agricultural sales and there's a little bit, a lot of management in that. So I work with a lot of people in process, uh, but mostly in the agricultural field. Um, <clears throat> can we go right into the book? Is that what we're gonna do? I think uh, I did want to mention one other thing was that we decided that when we, um, one thing we could be doing is collecting our email addresses if we wanted to share with each other. So if you do want to do that, go ahead. We're going to start a spreadsheet. So go ahead and put that in the chat so I can collect those sometime during the meeting. Um, other than that, yeah, take it away. Um, all right. So I'm about halfway through this book um, and I think I've got ear marks and um, lines and words all over like every other page. So that always says to me, there's a lot in here that I'm going to have to digest and I'm going to have to re-digest and probably reread like 16 times. This is um, very much the concept if you're familiar with um, the secret and putting out, um, you know, the energy and what you focus on is what 
is what transpires. And <clears throat> so it was a really great reminder. It was a little um, science-y for me to just, I, I just like, just get to the point, what do I have to do? <laughs> um, so I, I appreciated the understanding of how it works and why it works. Um, but for me, it was really just a reminder of, you know, what you focus on, that's what you're gonna get more of. And it helped me because I, I have been in a rut. I actually circled that word on here. It was on page 46, rut. Um, because I'm doing way too much thinking and not enough feeling. Um, and I just came off um, a seven day, very intense work trip. I'm exhausted. I like, I'm just not back to normal. And, but it was really insightful because um, I got, I almost got to like step outside myself and just watch the situation <clears throat> that I was in for the last week. And what pieces were pieces that I was just in the rut or pieces that I felt like I was creating. And it's really interesting when you pull the things, because that's what he's talking about is the creative part. When you go into the zone, if you will, and time goes by and you don't realize what's happening, that's your creative juices and that's where your energy come from. And that's what moves you on to the next thing. So it was an, a reminder, but also a realization of how much more for me, I have to live in the creative zone and not in the thinking zone, if you will. Um, the, I thought was interesting. Um, there was a quote on page 46 that says you have formed the habit of being yourself by becoming in, in a sense, enslaved to your environment. And I know this last year, I have worked really hard to be out of my environment. And that's when the biggest changes have come. And it's so funny how we forget what we did to get to where we are that made the change. And I'm like, oh, that's it. Now I'm now I got to change everything. But that's funny because I had already started doing that. And for me, that comes out with like, you know, cleaning my closet, painting a room. And that's when I know some big shift is coming. And when I got home from my chip, what is the first thing I did? I started cleaning my closet. So, um, so just the simple things of, you know, being outside your environment to get gain a little bit of perspective, I think was really insightful. Thank you. And I think too, so one of my habits I need to stop doing is I'm always ahead of myself. So the collecting emails in the list was one thing, but the other thing was letting new people introduce themselves. So Heather, will you oh. please, <laughs> uh, Lisa, you have to slap me virtually. Um, Heather, will you please introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'm Heather Miller. I'm a historian um, in Seattle. I work for a consulting company called appropriately Historical Research Associates. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to do this. You know, I will just say, um, unless there's somebody else who needs to introduce themselves for being new. No, nope, um, I think you're the newest new. Um, what I think what we should do, because we were just trying to figure out how to manage, it took us a long time to get to discussion last time. I think what we should do is if you're new, we'll, we'll definitely let you introduce yourself. Um, if you're not new, um, and most people know you, we can just like the first time you talk, you can just say who you are really quickly and then just move into the conversation. So go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, so I will, um, I am the person I have read. I'm at 40% on my Kindle, um, <laughs> because my life got in, in the way, um, of it, but I kind of had a mind blown moment last night. I think this is one of these things I don't typically read um this kind of stuff so that's why i'm really excited about this group just sort of like getting outside of my comfort zone in terms of reading i'm much more like fact focused or linear based kind of i mean historians you know we sort of work on a continuum but what i thought was most cool about this and maybe most applicable in some ways to some of the work we do is with native american tribes in the sort of sense that time is not a linear continuum which again i my mind was a bit blown and the science was interesting I wonder then I started wondering like how true is is it you know like this idea that the the lack of the lack of matter is the big biggest thing not the not the matter so that was kind of interesting to me but a lot of times in with the people that we work with you know it's very hard I think for western minded people to grasp Native American concepts of time which are not linear they are they are much more sort of past and the future, they all come together and it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, historians will say, well, you know, you don't have a written record of that. Like, so therefore, how can you possibly know? Or you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. How can you possibly be sort of, you know, um, referring to things that 
will happen in the future kind of thing. And so it really kind of, for me, that was like having been 40% through the books, kind of the biggest takeaway. And then, and then, yeah, like Jody, like you said, the sort of sense that it is true that when you get in the zone and, you know, there's some of these phrases that I like kind of a knee jerk reaction. I'm like, Oh, that's like woo woo stuff. But I, I think that that's actually really true. And um, it's almost in like you're channeling stuff through yourself as opposed to forcing it to be what you want it to be. Um, so yeah, that was great. Really interesting. Just made, reminded me too, when she was talking about, you know, it's kind of like your zone, your energy is going through you. And, and there was a part in here about it wasn't really so much your identity. It was like the energy that you bring to the situation. And I was like, well, isn't that a really interesting perspective? Um, so I, I think I would like to not bring myself essentially to all of what I'm doing, but really my energy. I think that is what makes the difference. I love because yourself is kind of yourself is limited by your past experiences right which which yeah it's like and what fires wires the more you have negative thought process the more you live in the past and only refer to things that happened to you in the past you're just bound by that right thank you i love that connection and I, of course it brings my back my brain back to four agreements and why i like that book so much it has you know the indian overtones and I'm so glad you made it here today. <laughs> so who wants to go next? Lisa, you want to go? I, I can go too, if Lisa doesn't want to. Oh, go ahead. Well, I like to go to, this is a book I picked. So I kind of want to give people the, I'm so excited anyone liked this book because I love this book. So I'll go last. I, um, okay, I can go then. Thank you, Lisa. I, um, I love this I mean, wow, I have a lot of change happening. So this book is very serendipitous. Um, and in a way, it feels like it's coming at a time when I'm kind of building a bike and riding it at the same time. And so the perspective and insight that it has given me um, during this time has been, you know, I kind of think I would say mind blowing or very, you know, very helping me and um, get maybe even giving me some encouragement around like, yeah, follow your, follow your energy, follow your gut. You're, you're doing the right thing. And, um, and I really appreciate that. And I also, so I, I'm, unlike Heather, I do tend to like this kind of stuff. Like I do like the feel good, whatever. But I am married to somebody that is very, um, very rational, you know, and we have a wonderful balance and he respects me and my kind of um, more whimsical self. And I respect him and his more logical, rational self. But I always have him in the back of my mind when I'm reading some of this type of book or books about like, get what, you know, the energy that you put out there, you get back and all of this stuff. And so I love that it's, you know, explained through science because it kind of takes that voice that it just can't help. That's kind of in the back of my mind, not in a negative way, but just kind of saying, Hey, look at it from all angles way um, out of the picture. And so it, I, it's just, it's, it's an amazing book and I some of the quotes um, I have here that I really have liked are um, I mean I have a lot but um, if you want a new outcome you have to break the habit of being yourself it and then there's another one I can paraphrase it um, but it's basically if you do the same thing or think the same way or act the same way then you're going to inevitably get the same outcome. So you need to make some changes both internally and externally to get to the life that you want or to the world that you want. And I think I kind of figured that out before the reading the book, but I, it, it kind of allowed me to be like, ah, yeah, this is another reason why it was the right thing to do. Um, 
And just to also say and throw out there, I did put this on Facebook, but when I saw the title, I was like, I don't want to break the habit of being myself. I want to learn how to be the best version of myself, but not break the habit of being myself. Obviously in reading the book, I understand the context now, but um, like a few pages in, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a great book. And I shouldn't have, I should have never um, like questioned Laura or Lisa or Jody and the rest of the team that said that it's a great book because I trust you guys and I'm really excited that I read it. So thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. I can, um, I can. Oh. It's okay to, to not like the book though, even if you glad that you did, but it's okay. I don't like it. Cause then I have to sweat. Tanya, I was going to go. So it took me yeah. on a roller coaster. I have to say that. Um, there, I, I love science. Um, I tend not to like science in my reading like this. So the, the quantum you and really pulling in quantum physics, I love that in the, in the first section as it got into waves and really hardcore science, I felt like, okay, I don't, I don't need that to, you know, similar to, I think what, what Christina had said, but I, I really put on not only this being about me, but other people in my life, whether it's personally or professionally and similar to extreme ownership, which was our book last month, there's a clear audience. So the, the idea of mindfulness and meditation and the energy you put out, you sort of will your world. I, I wholeheartedly believe, but I recognize that not everyone is there and, and to, to get there or to even consider going there takes many different paths. And so similar to extreme ownership, I think the science will be helpful, you know, like for my husband, um, since he doesn't read the meditation books I got him. I think this is going to be more up his alley as an engineer, like extreme ownership was. Um, and as a consultant, really intending to focus on working with founders and thinking about their identity being separated from the organization and them at some point transitioning from their organization. I think this will really resonate with certain members of that audience. And so I think it will be a book that I will use in my consulting practice um, as I work with, you know, how do founders think about their organizations living on without them? You know, and so I think that's really there. There's some sections I really loved, and like I said, the the, the energy side. I, I love quantum leadership, um, and energy leadership and stuff like that. And and so it re that really resonated with me that some of the science in the back was I didn't I didn't need, but overall overall a thumbs up because I think there's value to some of my audiences, and I I I did write down a couple of quotes from that. Thank you. Awesome. So your your husband read the extreme ownership? Listening. Listening. He he wanted the voice of Jacko in his head. I <laughs> I did not. I mean he loved doesn't. it. He loved he was like he was he was really pumped by that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, who'd like to go next? Here. Um, I'll go. Um so I, I really enjoyed the book. Uh, and it's funny cause it was, it was something I, I've put into practice uh, way prior to ever even reading this book, which is kind of interesting to see it like in words. Um, one of the things I kind of wish I would have done is the meditations while I was reading the book. Right. So like start the practice of the meditation and then get the science behind why I'm doing it while I'm doing it. I think that that would have been a fun approach to it. Because uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to any of the meditations part. Um, I'm about halfway through, like on week like two or three uh, of the meditation practice of just reading through it. Um, I haven't actually put them in practice, which I, I am kind of interested in, in giving it a go. Um, although, you know, and I guess this is where I, I like this and it's something I've practiced before is that I, I don't believe that the meditation is necessarily something that is necessary to be able to make some of these changes. Um, you know, uh, I know that, um, let me see here, what did I put in here? Um, 
I agree that, you know, you are kind of uh, your past, right? And your past kind of dictates how you're going to uh, react to things and, and who you're going to be in the future and ultimately be that outcome of the future. And, and if you don't have the best foundation of who you are, uh, it's going to, of course, hinder your ability to have the best future. And, you know, making some of those changes is definitely necessary. Um, and, you know, most recently, this is the example that I had that I, I actually did. So let, let's, let's rewind like eight months ago. Um, I had, uh, I didn't have the best technique for handling um, frustrating situations. Oftentimes, you know, I kind of showed my colors of how frustrated I was to whomever it was that I was dealing with. And, and that's unfortunate on uh, both ends of the scale, because, you know, here's me um, wanting to be looked upon as a leader, right? And then I have this other individual who I'm looking down on and, and not treating them as a peer. And so ultimately creating this really bad situation where I'm, I'm not a leader whatsoever. Um, and so what that made me do is kind of reflect like, well, this isn't how I ever want to react to any situation like this again. So in my brain, I kept playing over, uh, what are the million different scenarios that I could potentially encounter today? Right. And replaying those in my head and how am I going to react to it? And what that's going to look like and really making it. And I, and they reference this in the book that you have to kind of make that your future, right? You get the the, the butterflies in your stomach and that's your body responding that it's kind of happening, but even though it hasn't happened yet. And I had gone through that to such a degree that within a couple of months, I was literally able to transform how I've been able to handle future problems. So I've run into a number of different situations uh, where it was, you know, that, that higher level of frustration but what was really neat about it was that I actually came out of it very constructively where I could get a, a better sense of like, okay, well, where did you come up with this, like, right? Like, why did you come up with this answer? Okay, great. Thank you for your input. You know, maybe if we took a look at it this way, you know, it would be a little bit better. And, and you know, we work together and I've built some really, really solid relationships because of it with some of the people I even work with, you know? Um, and, and I thought that was pretty cool. And, and I tied that all together to actually the extreme ownership uh, book, you know, taking some accountability that, that, you know, the, I had to look at myself and say, Hey, there's some fault here, right? You need to change something about you in order to get the best outcome for other things. So um, overall, I really did enjoy the book. I loved the science behind it. You know, I'm, I'm a space nerd. So, you know, when they start talking about quantum mechanics and, and energy in space, I'm, I'm like, yeah, this is totally my scene. Uh, uh, but I'm with you guys. You know, it was a challenging first, like maybe 100 pages because it was super sciencey. But once you got over that, you know, 100 or so page hump, um, it, def it definitely got really good. Uh, really great, great read. I love the comp color commentary from Eric when I, he's like, why are you making me read the 600 page book? <laughs> I was, like, I was upset going. at first. <laughs> it took me, it took me a minute to do it. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know why you guys would recommend a crazy book like this, this is so long. You only get a month to read it. Lisa's like, I may or may not have suggested this book. <laughs> She's like, just keep reading it. You'll like it. I'm like, okay, great. I'll read it. So, but I ended up liking it. I did. I, great pick, Lisa. I think it was uh, definitely a, uh, a great book. And, and I'm, I'm looking forward to trying out those uh, meditation techniques. Let's see if we can, you know, make some significant change. I want to hop in a little bit on the meditation because this is my third read of the book. I've read it every year for three years now. And what I love about how he positions meditation is I'm not really great at meditation, but he does the opportunities to write I think that has been the most powerful tool in my life. Just going, I've seen progress over three years using that, the ability, because what it does is even while I'm not meditating in my daily, like kind of like what Eric's talking about, I have that, what I've written and it's in my subconscious brain now. And it's almost like, nope, put that down. That's the past. Nope, pick this up. That's the future. And it's getting like, it's almost like you start to swim up I always say swim above the wave uh, you know in front of the wave instead of like 
doggy paddling. So it, it does get better, but I mean, I don't, I don't know that the ultimate goal is to have us all be master meditators, but I have seen prog progress in my practice. I'll Great. still hold the rest of my comments. To yeah. <laughs> I've got to, so much to say. I'd rather to hear other people. Piggyback on that though, the written thing, I went back and I, I need to write more often because I forget what I think all, all the time. And I had pulled out a notebook from last year when I started the, like trying to change my energy and I had forgotten and I read it and I was like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> like I had, I have really good stuff in there and I didn't remember, but that's what had started to get me to where I am now. And it's such a difference. So, so the written thing, I, I would second that and probably need to do more of it. Yeah. And that's exactly why we're reading some of these books over, you know, it's like, you have to keep diving back in and pulling it back into your brain and going, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process, not a one-time thing. And um, to Eric's point, I've been reading the book on double speed, trying to get through it. And I'm to the meditation part right now. <laughs> and, um, and it's actually amazing. I've been reading books on one and a half speed for a long time. So I stepped it up to two, two times and it's not that like, I can totally get it. It's so I think I'll be reading all my books on two times speed now. So maybe I'll uh, actually get through them. <laughs> um Great. All right. Go ahead, Heather. I have a quick question. Do you guys mostly do read, like when, do you listen to your books more or read them? I'm Everybody's curious. different. Yeah. I, I listen because I just don't have the time or patience. Like if I start reading a book, I fall asleep. So <laughs> like with my eyes. So yeah. um, I, I, I like to go for walks and right. I, for me, it was like, I would skip going for walks, but if I knew if I could read a book while I was walking, then I felt like I was still doing something productive. So um audio Great books works for me, but Lisa definitely more likes to read books. Yeah, and, <laughs> and actually I have, so I've got my book and I, the first two times I read it and this time I, I tried audible and it is a different experience to, I, it just is different. The difference between the two. So I suggest if you find a book, you like feel how it is in a different um, format. It was very interesting to listen to yeah. it this time. Three years ago for me, I had on my, on my personal development plan, I had one book that I got through. And then when I changed to audio, I had 30. So, you know, find out what you're, what's holding you back and fix it. <laughs> Nicole or Barry, did you want to chime in? That's the moral of the story, Laura, figure out what's holding you back and fix it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad to hear I was not the only one that groaned Eric at the size of this book because when it came in the mail, I was like, what the hell? Oh my God, this looks like a freaking textbook. And it's got like a brain guy on the front. I'm like, oh my Lord. Um, I do not like to read science books like at all. So I was um, I just stood in my greatness of trust that you ladies picked this book for a great reason. And so I plowed through it and surprisingly, I really enjoyed it. And I, I really was very, very surprised because I do not like sciencey stuff. And most of it was getting absorbed and I, I kind of got it and I'm like, oh, okay, look at me feeling all smart. Um, so it, you know, I really enjoyed it. I, I am a book reader, Heather. I, I've tried doing the audible and sometimes I do that as a companion, but I am a highlighter kind of gal and I can't I just can't not highlight things because then sometimes I'll go back and just read snippets that I've highlighted um so overall I thought the book was great I just finished it yesterday because like I think I said either last month or the month before I have to like see how many pages how many days do I have left before a book club let me give myself one day of cushion and make it work um so I haven't done the meditations yet I've just started kind of body scan meditating for a few days, um, but I'm looking forward to that piece of it because it made sense to me. Um, I think it could be really powerful. I'm not sure that I would actually carve out an hour, which I think is what he ultimately said. Once you put it all together, I'm like, what, where am I creating an hour? You're getting me out of, did you say five minutes, Tanya? Yeah. Yeah, I'm down with five minutes, 10 minutes. I could even do 15, but an hour, I'm like, I'm not getting out of bed an hour early. I don't think, who knows? Maybe next month I'll tell you I've done it. Um, 
So I would just, I would give it a thumbs up. I, I thought it was really great. I, I did enjoy the science part. I enjoyed um, understanding more about how our brains work and just the being reminded about how our self-limiting beliefs really can drag us down. And I, I enjoyed the writing prompts. I haven't done them all yet, but I definitely enjoyed being prompted to think about things that I probably haven't been thinking about in that way um, to help me start figuring out, okay, what are those pieces that I really need to let go of so that I can move forward? Because I've been feeling kind of stuck for the last several months. And I know pandemic and weather and I miss people and all that stuff, but <clears throat> I've definitely been feeling some stuckness. So I, I think moving forward with this will help me hopefully get a little unstuck. So thank you, Lisa. I didn't think I'd be thanking anyone for this, but I, I am thanking you. <laughs> Appreciate That's it. That's the other nice thing about audiobooks. You don't know how long they are. You know how many hours it, it tells you it's going to take to read it, but you don't see the pages. So you're just like, okay, whatever. That's a good point. <laughs> well, I got the audible for and the paper book for the next month. So we'll see how that goes. Barry or Chris? So I'll go because I will be okay. honest and say that I am probably, I guess I'm the only one who didn't read the book, um, but I've enjoyed listening to the discussion and I'm actually more encouraged to plug through it and, and actually read it. So um, thank you all for sharing all of your insight. So it's been a good um, tease of the book, but uh, I have talked a little bit about it with Eric and um, I do plan on reading it. I just this month I've, I've needed some fiction. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Barry, well, thank you for Robin. making the challenge to show up. Yeah. Go ahead, Robin. And I just want to let you know, you aren't alone. I had no time. To oh, read thank this God, Robin. Either. Thank you. <laughs> you no, know, just wanted to pipe up and let you know that. Thank you. I feel less guilty now. Well, well I still came. I, we both thank still you. came. So that's what, what matters, I guess. Yeah, I think that was Laura and I, we were like, we, this is no guilt zone, right? And this is kind of yeah. anything goes with a bunch of friends to talk about a book because, you know, coming together for an hour, I can still learn things from somebody, even if I read the book or not. So we definitely wanted that to be a part of our group. So we're glad you came. Thank you. And I have to say, Christina, actually, I'm pretty sure she described my marriage when she was talking about mm -hmm. how her husband is much more scientific and, and literal as mine is too. So um, hmm. that made me excited to read it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good team, right? <laughs> Can be. Depends on the day and how many how long you've been in a pandemic. So yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to chime in next if that would if that would work yep, with the group. So I, I too, like the group, was a little bit surprised at the size of the book. And I, I know with all the activities that we have every day, I was taking out my calculator. Right now, I got to read 16.6 .6 pages today. So um, I, I really enjoyed the book. I thought it was a great book um, for me personally. I have to understand how things work. And if I do, I'm able to process it much better. So um, I really appreciated how uh, Dr. Dispenza kind of laid things out. Um, I love learning about matter and energy and how it went from the t Newtonian ways to, you know, what Einstein um, brought us and how the body works on a cellular level and a neurochemical level and um, just the different parts of the brain and their roles, um, learning about epigenetics um, and that our energy is transmitted vibrationally. I mean, this is all stuff that I've heard about, but it was really insightful for me to, to learn these things. Very helpful. Um, I really like the illustrations and the visuals in the book. I'm a visual learner. So to, to, to be able to reference uh, what he had just talked about and, and look at it uh, from a visual perspective was very helpful for me. Uh, I've actually thought about maybe putting a PowerPoint together and just taking out all the, the visuals for me so that it can really help me remember all the different parts of the book. Um, there was a couple of parts that were, uh, one part that was a little bit shocking to me. And then one part that was, I think, kind of just the universe working, if you will. Um, when he talked about that 95% of our day is controlled by our subconscious, I had my, my jaw hit the table. I was just like, wow, that, that was something that I just, I was very surprised at. Um, 
And it's very shocking that your, you know, your prefrontal cortex is only is only doing, you know, working for five percent of the day. So, um, one of the other things that was very interesting, I was sitting one night with my family, kind of flipping through some things. And there's a podcast that I really liked that I think I mentioned last time called Impact Theory. But there is a, a lady who was on Impact Theory this week, and she, uh, her name is uh, Nicole Lapira. And I don't know if anybody has come across her work yet, but um, why I think it was really interesting is because she was talking about a lot of the things that Dr. Dispenza did. So for me, it was reassurance that what I was reading about and learning about, um, that there were other people who were kind of confirming and talking about some of the different things that Dr. Dispenza was. So I, I just looked at it as a kind of a sign from the universe that, you know, I was in the right space at the right time. Um, I definitely thought it was interesting as I kind of got through the book a little bit. To, I was, I was definitely starting to catch myself when I would, my monkey mind would start going and I would, um, you know, start getting into my subconscious was just, you know, just going crazy. And I really thought that what, the one thing at the end of the book where he says, you know, when that's happening, just stop yourself and say change. I was like, wow, that works. Um, and I've done that a couple of times and caught myself. So um, I really enjoyed the book. I give it two thumbs up. And um, I do think it's, it feels a little bit overwhelming or daunting, the process that he describes to try and you know, do the hour of meditation with everything else that we have. So I'll be, I am going to try and, and work on that. Um, but it does feel a little bit overwhelming. So anyway, uh, those are kind of my feedback. Chris, if you end up putting that PowerPoint together, will you share that with us? That sounds yeah, of course. right up my alley. Yeah. And damn, you go guy, you were spitting stuff out of that book. Like, I'm like oh my God, look at them, all these facts and Good for you. I barely remember what I read last night, but <laughs> thanks for the <laughs> <Thank> recap. <laughs> I appreciate hey, it. Thank you. Chris, that, that uh, raises kind of an interesting point, right? Which is that wouldn't, couldn't somebody argue, just for arguments purposes, that if you're a, actually able to put 95% of what you need to do on autopilot, that the other 5% could then be used to much greater good? Like, I mean, I, I also was really struck by that. And it, I was like, oh, that's probably right. Like everything we do in our lives is a habit and anything that gets outside of that habit becomes uncomfortable for some reason, or it's uncomfortable to the people around you who are used to you operating in a certain way, right? So that's two different things. But um, yeah, I mean, maybe it's good that some of that stuff's on autopilot. You don't have to think about it so much. Like, you know, you create pro work processes, right? For efficiency in your work environment. So, so that you could focus more uh, keenly on the things that are not just in a mm -hmm. process. So maybe that, maybe we could put a little bit of a positive spin on some of that at least, and mm -hmm. then focus really mm -hmm. on trying to like break out of the things that really need to be broken out of. Like, I don't necessarily need to change the fact that I'm really good at having my food. I don't have to think about my food because I've got it down to a process, right? So I don't know. Just, just a thought. Yeah, interesting thoughts. I, I will tell you, it's interesting. I, I'm, I'm right-handed, uh, so um, I forced myself just because of this book. I forced myself to brush my teeth left-handed, and it was not easy. I was, <laughs> it was something that my brain and my body did not like, but I keep on doing it, and it's getting easier. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny because I, I did the same thing, not with the right hand, left hand, but I was like, wait, you know that it, it, we are so routine. You don't even think. And so this morning I actually kind of reversed my morning routine. Like I always do the same kind of things and I, I reversed it and, and I feel like all out of whack, but I still got it done. It's just not, you know, not your normal. I thought, oh, well, maybe, maybe I could gain something from that. I'm not doing it the same way every time. I love it. You guys it, are really digging into this. It also makes me realize or think about I something that I've really missed with COVID, but I love to do. And my husband and I share a love for this is traveling and like kind of, you know, going to places. I love going to places that are completely different. Like, of course, I like going to, you know, the beach or things, but I like going to like, I really want to go to um, India because I know every aspect of everything that I'm doing there is going to be so different. And I really want to go to like Cambodia and I, you know, these places that are just so different that you, you can't even necessarily like figure out things because they're not using letters in the same way, or, you know, they're using characters. 
And um, I, 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 a little bit of an aha moment for this book was that I wonder if I love that and doing that and like experiencing that, that's something so different because it allows me to use more of my brain. And it's just so different than what I'm used to. So it was just an interesting little aha moment. One of many that I had during this book. I think that can go right back down to where he's talked, the parts where he talks about addiction, you, you get to enjoy that and it lights up parts of your brain. So you want more of that. So I do the same thing. I, I mean, I moved to different cities. <laughs> I'm like, I want to live different. I want to live in different environments and experiences. And I kind of, I'm craving that again. I'm like, all right, three years in Syracuse, where can I go now? So um, I think Christina, you're, you're experiencing that you know, that lights up your brain and, you know, Chris could tell you more exactly where I don't remember, like Nicole said, but (laughs) yeah, I I was impressed with Chris recall too. Chris's recall, excuse me. Lisa, do you want me to go or do you want to go? Up to you. Well, I'll go until you can hold down the the caboose. (laughs) Um, I love everything that you guys said and, um, you know, I have to put my weirdness on it always. So I've meditated one time in my life and I had such a vision. I've never done it again since it was like, cool, done. That was, <laughs> so I know it can be done. Um, I had, I don't know where, what I was reading. I did a lot of reading back then when I was like 18. Um, and I was reading something or something that guided me into meditation. It was like holding something in your hand and really focusing on it. And I, it totally, took me somewhere else. Like, (laughs) so you can do it. It's real. Um, but I haven't done it since. So I'm kind of curious now if I will listen to the, I'm at the part where he's talking about how to do the meditation. Um, I'm interested to actually make time to try it and see if I can do that again. Um, but I did like the book enough to also include it as a recommendation in the conflict resolution workshop I just delivered yesterday. Eric, I think you would have loved it. I talked about a lot of the things you mentioned. And then I also referenced my next workshop is a stream accountability because they are so related. And, um, you know, I talked about the three points I mentioned from the book. I'll probably forget at least one of them because that's my brain. Um, But I really mentioned just like what, if you want something to change, you have to do something different. So if you're having conflict at work, if you want something to change, you have to do something different. If you're, um, you know, every time you approach your boss or your coworker and you have this tension, like sit and visualize and think about how it could be different, what it looks and feels like, and then maybe you'll approach it different the next day. Um, and then the other thing was, see, I forgot the second thing, but lastly was like, stop playing the victim. If you are going to always feel like the victim, you're going to be that person at work who everything always happens to you. And it's not because of circumstance or because of policy or whatever. It's like, they're always doing stuff to me. And that person at work is one of the worst people to work with. So I thought that was really great. Um, And I don't know, I I didn't, I didn't think it was overly sciencey, but also I was reading it really fast. So um, some of the examples that he used, I was not in love with. Like I laughed out loud when he said that someone had thought positively and their warts disappeared overnight. I was like, yeah, that's called coincidence. <laughs> An anomaly. Not We can't all sit here and think and feel what it's like to not have cancer and all of a sudden it's gone. Like, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a key ingredient and point to be positive and think that way. But um, to reference it like as a as a hardcore piece of science, I was like, I'm not so sure, but I still liked everything else and the concept and the ideas enough to, to keep on reading it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to keep, keep referencing it. And I really, I like, I really love the pieces about your energy and separating your body from your identity and those sorts of things. I think about that stuff a lot. And so it gave me another frame of reference to try to keep doing that. Um, one of the things that I always, um, my niece was had cancer when she was two and a half and she was in my care. And I literally like feel like that was one of my purposes in life. So everything else that's happened to me ever since then is just, my purpose is fulfilled. I should be the freest person ever to just live my life and do the things I wanna do because I completed my purpose. Of course I can find other purposes, but if that was the one thing I accomplished in my life, I'm happy. <laughs> so I guess the only other thing was the, um, I, I feel like it kind of lays on the premise that your past is bad 
And I have so much good stuff from my past that I want to go back and I don't want to eliminate. And I, and, you know, I'm more of the Peter Pan, like go to your happy thought and then you can fly. Right. So um, I, some of it was also very just like past is bad. And I'm like, no, 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 I want to pick and choose what I'm going to keep here, but I definitely want to clear things out of my past, but I'm going to hold on to when I, like a lot of times for me, when I visualize my success, I'm visual, I'm, I'm going back to like, remember that time you did this other thing, like moved to Ireland and went across the country in an RV and did all this stuff. Like you can channel that energy into my future things and go, you can do that again. So, um, those are my, my thoughts on the book. So anyway, good pick Lisa. I'm, I was happy to read it. See, this is usually where I'm actually sweating. Cause Laura and I are usually, like, we love each other because we're direct opposites in parts. So I picked a book Laura liked. Yes. It's the ultimate. So I think from my perspective, I mean, obviously I like this book, but um, I, I have worked in the financial services industry for over 20 years. And I have a personality that can be somewhat Pollyanna as I was younger, but I did have this natural belief system that we can move forward and I could create things. I think I did a little bit more blood, sweat and tears than that emotional piece. Um, and, and just maturing in my later forties, I'm I like, I've seen this progress and I look back. Um, but with that financial, I, I coach financial advisors a lot. And what, uh, about three years ago, I got a, a, a certification in applied positive psychology. And it like, I think I do some woo woo stuff in a not woo woo way, but how do I really help people move through that? The woo woo stuff without feeling woo woo was positive psychology for me. And it's a lot of what this book is and it's, it's just science-based stuff. And so for me, this, this is a tool that I just really help people. I, I kind of know where they need to go and help them get there, but I can do it without saying, just trust me. Right. I can say, just trust the science. So I think it's been a really, for me, positive psychology was a really big um, shift for me. It was a huge self-care I couldn't quite figure it out. So part of this book where I think we're talking about the past was a really big piece for me was rumination and uh, putting down past trauma. I would say, well, I don't really have any trauma. Like I've got, I had great parents. I grew up, you know, blah, 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 blah. But there's a lot of stuff I picked up every day and thought about every day in my subconscious mind and putting those things down, I think was such a powerful gift to me. And I think that's a part of what this book helped me do along with some other really good people in my life. So I think um, I love that part of the book that really emphasizes that put it down if it's not serving you, because it's really those thoughts are like 90% of the time our thoughts are doing this, right? Creating this. So for really ruminating on stuff, thinking about the past, it's really hard to move forward. Um, I think the other piece that I love is our genes do not always have to predetermine our destination. I get really pre -stu I'm pretty stuck in my parents' genetics. Uh, my mom now has Alzheimer's and is not doing well. And so I, I've created a lot of worry and fear around that. So that re this book couldn't have been better timing for me. I actually talked to a gentleman whose mother passed away from Alzheimer's and he and I, he's going to read the book and we're going to try to like really think about eat maybe, maybe it's true. I'm genetically disposed to Alzheimer's, but my thoughts and my patterns and the, my attitude can really help make that journey look differently than at 47. If I'm going to, I'm going to have it be like my, my, I don't know what you call it, my death ticket right now. Right. So it really got me thinking about like, I can, I, that may be true for me, but I can create a pathway into Alzheimer's that might look different than it did for my mother. And so I think that was kind of a gift of reading the book again. Um, and I, I, could, I could go on about science and all this good stuff. Um, but I do know that the science piece really helps people kind of move through this. And the only other thing I would say is that I, I've noticed a big change is how I approach conversation when he talked about um, dreading something dreading a conversation, really being mindful about the people that I want to spend my time with. Sometimes I wasn't being fair about that, what I thought that, that moment, that engagement was going to look like. And I have seen a huge shift in three years of like me taking the time ahead of time for that, like mother-in-law engagement that he calls. I really enjoyed um, taking a breath. My husband and I were talking like, 
taking a breath and then seeing what that engagement can look like with a different perspective going into it. And I've really enjoyed some of them. And quite honestly, the ones that I know that I haven't enjoyed, I put those relationships down with a clear conscience where I used to always feel guilty about breaking ties. So I think that was really helpful for me to take that that piece of it and put it into practice where I was really giving the engagement the best opportunity to be successful because I was bringing more negativity to it than, you know, I thought it was them, but it was a little bit about that dread. So that was pretty helpful too. And I'm so relieved you even read the book. So thank you all for being good <laughs> book partners. <laughs> yeah, this was great discussion. So um, let's pop over and talk about next month's book. And then if, um, if you have to leave it one, that's great. If not, I think we can stay on for a few more minutes for final comments if anybody wants to. So the next book is Big Magic, Creating Living Beyond Things in the Way, Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert. So our discussion is, as usual, the last Thursday of the month. That'll be the 29th at noon. Um, feel free to invite other people if you run into coworkers, friends, colleagues who like to read these types of books and would enjoy having this type of conversation. We are prepared to be growing and, like I said, be getting more members to join so we can start funding some literacy projects and other things. And um, I think Kristen picked this book. She's not here. So has anybody read this? Have any um, anything to say to help us introduce this book? I like the title. I um, don't know much about Elizabeth Gil Gilbert, but I believe I follow her on Instagram when I have a chance to get on there. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard really great things about this author. So I'm, I'm really interested in, in kind of, this is a different kind of book for us, kind of, but I'm reflecting on last year. This might be a different, a different book. So I'm really interested in diving into it. Um, I have to go everyone. It was great to connect. Thank you. This is Thanks. Christina. Have a Bye, great Christina. day. Bye Christina. Bye. Okay, yeah, I we're also need to go, but thank so you for can... having me. Yes, thanks for coming, Heather. I'm going to stop recording. So thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.